happy, happy, hmm, happy, happy. I said say what? Hmm. Please, get your authorized version of the scriptures. And turn with me in your authorized version of the scriptures to Isaiah chapter 55. Happy! Happy! Hmm. Unfortunately, there is a uh, a song done uh, that was done by a grotesque cartoon many years ago. Uh, they had a song, uh, happy, happy, joy, joy. <laughs> Unfortunately, that went through my head. Beg your pardon. Isaiah chapter 55. Happy, happy. Hmm. Isaiah 55. Please follow along with me. Read along with me, word for word, verse by verse. Oh, everyone that thirsteth, come ye to the waters. And the waters that I offer you will spring out of your belly unto eternal life. That's what our Lord Jesus Christ said. And he that hath no money, come ye. Buy and eat, yea, come, buy wine and milk without money and without price. Wherefore do ye spend money for that which is not bread? Meaning bread, things that are needful for you. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. And your labor for that which satisfieth not. Hmm. Hmm. It's very interesting, too, when you uh, consider that about the book of Ecclesiastes. I'm looking at my notes right here. <laughs> about Ecclesiastes. King Solomon had all that his heart could desire. And he withheld from his heart no joy. But what was that joy in? Hmm. What was that joy in? Was it in the stuff? Hmm. Or was it in the Lord? Hmm. Let's continue. Hearken diligently unto me, and eat ye that which is good, and let your soul delight itself in fatness. Incline your ear and come unto me. Here, and your soul shall live. And I will make an everlasting covenant with you, even the sure mercies of David. Dispensational difference. But the sure mercies of David. Jesus Christ is the son of David, the king of Israel, the king of the Jews, God our Father. Okay? Behold, I have given him for a witness to the people, a leader and commander to the people. Talking about our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father. You know, when he comes back at his second coming with us, okay? Behold, thou shalt call a nation that thou knowest not, and nations that knew not thee shall run unto thee because of the Lord thy God, for and for the Holy One of Israel, for he hath glorified thee. Seek ye the Lord, while he may be found. Call ye upon him while he is near. The word is nigh thee, even in thy mouth, in thy heart. Right? Where do you get your morals from? <laughs> Some of you are very questionable. But how do, we inst how do we know that lying is wrong, that murder is wrong, huh? That just evolved, right? Shh, don't tell anyone. Shh. Okay? Let the wicked forsake his way. And the unrighteous man, his thoughts, yes, thoughts can be sin. Oh, boy. And let him return unto the Lord, and he will have mercy upon him and to our God, for he will abundantly pardon. Now, unfortunately, these two verses, 
have been trivialized by Christians and Christianity. Okay? But we mustn't let what Christians do onto Scripture sway us away from enjoying gleaning the truth that Scripture is, the Word of God. Okay? For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, saith the Lord. Amen. If God thought like we do, oh, wow. If his ways were as our ways, oh, boy. You know, you and I, we, th we think we have a right to get indignant about things. But then again, put in uh, perspective, who has more greater cause and uh, reason to be indignant than God our Father, our Lord Jesus Christ? For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. For as the rain cometh down, and the snow from heaven, and returneth not thither, but watereth the earth, and maketh it bring forth and bud, that it may give seed to the sower, and bread to the eater, so shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth. It shall not return unto me void, but it shall accomplish that which I please. And it shall prosper in the thing whereunto I sent it. For ye shall go out with joy and be led forth with peace. The mountains and the hills shall break forth before you into singing, and all the trees of the field shall clap their hands. Why is that? Because they have joy. Joy in what? Joy in our Lord Jesus Christ. Okay? Instead of the thorn shall come up the fir tree, and instead of the briar shall come up the myrtle tree, and it shall be to the Lord for a name, for an everlasting sign that shall not be cut off. Happy. It, it, it strikes me very strange and troublesome when you have people who are millionaires, like the, these, these Christians, such as, uh, um, what's his name, uh, Robertson, Phil Robertson. He had a book called Happy, Happy, okay? Or Happy, 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 or whatever it was. And he, he's as fake as a $3 bill. Oh, he's really religious. Oh, he believes in a Jesus. Absolutely. He's a water dog, okay? He's a Campbellite, by the way, okay? Won't get off on that. But he's a self-professed millionaire. Don't you find it strange that people who seem to have the best of this world's stuff, hmm, if you bow down unto me, all will be thine, for it is given unto me, and whosoever I will, I give it, hmm. Isn't that interesting? But isn't it fascinating that those who are up here, the self-professed Christian millionaires. Those who have made it and have made a name for themselves. Don't you see it just a little fascinating that they are the ones who are going to tell you about happiness when everything is going right for them, worldly? Hmm? Isn't that something? Isn't that something? How come we don't see someone who is poor in the eyes of the world, of course, and uh, lives by bedlam and squalor. How come you don't take heed to someone like that who wants to tell you what true happiness is, who is of the church of the living God, say, born again? Why is that? Why is that? Turn to the book of John, John chapter 14. John chapter 14. We will be reading verses 23 on to verse... 29. John chapter 14, verses 23 on to verse 29. Jesus answered and said unto him, 
If a man love me, he will keep my words. And my word will go forth and accomplish that which I set it out to do, which we just kind of read. Okay? If a man love me, he will keep my words, and my father will love him. And we will come unto him and make our abode with him. Make our abode with him. See, in this dispensation, you come to the Lord on his terms. Broken, contrite, and fear the Lord, call upon his name. And he saved you. You are sealed until the day of redemption. The Lord lives within you. Okay? And that, that is joy unspeakable. But we're talking about happy. We're talking about happy today. Okay? Let's continue. He that loveth me not keepeth not my sayings, and the word which he hears is not mine, but the Father's which sent me. These things have I spoken unto you, being yet present with you. But the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance, whatsoever I have said unto you. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give unto you. Look at, don't look at me. Look at that verse. Not as the world giveth, give I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. Ye have heard how I said unto you, I go away and come again unto you. Meaning, he, you know, the Lord is the Holy Ghost, the Lord is that Spirit, okay? If ye loved me, ye would rejoice. Because I said, I go unto the Father, for my Father is greater than I. The soul is greater than the body, okay? That's what he means, okay? <laughs> and look at that verse again. If ye love me, ye would rejoice, because I said, I go unto the Father. Right there, verse 28, you hear uh, people say that they were looking forward to the cross all the way in the beginning, in Genesis. Bloop, that is not true. That is a lie. Look at what he just said. If ye love me, ye would rejoice. But his disciples were like, no, no, don't, don't, no, no, no. But see, had they known, if they were like some of these guys say, were looking forward uh, to the cross from the very beginning, from the book of Genesis, they would have been like, yay, Lord, go die for us. But they weren't. Don't, don't let anyone tell you that they were looking forward to the cross all the way in Genesis and through the Old Testament. There are figures of the cross within the Old Testament, absolutely, but they were not looking forward to it because they didn't know it because it wasn't revealed until, until Paul, the truth of the matter. Okay? Let's continue. And now I have told you before it come to pass that when it is come to pass, ye might believe. Be of good cheer. He has overcome the world. And, and, and looking at verse 27 again. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give unto you. Not as the world giveth, give I unto you. Not as the world giveth, give I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. And the people who have the best of the world's goods, they're not troubled like other men. They don't have the burdens or the anguishes that some of the other men do, do they? You know, I get so disgusted when I see people like Joseph Prince, who I mistakenly refer to as Derek Prince, both of them heretics, but talking about blessing and giving, you know, worldly blessing, uh, same with um, Phil Robinson and all these guys preaching to you, God wants you to be happy. Uh, don't we won't even discuss the devil Joel Osteen. But at this time, right now, when financial disaster is probably awaiting so many of us, and with the things that are going to come to pass this very year, you see Christians with their big smiles talking to you, God wants you to be happy. Can you find that for me in Scripture? The word happy, by the way, appears, what, 28 times? 
28 or 29 times. Okay? The word joy, the singular word joy, appears 169 times or 168, something like that. Okay? Quite a big difference there. And there are several variations of the word joy. There is only one other variation of the word happy found in scripture, and that's happier. And that is in context in uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 7, when um, he says, happier shall she be, in my opinion, if she continue in such a state, you know, talking about, thinking about marriage and stuff like that, okay? And yes, joy in the first five books of Moses does appear first before happy brother. Like I, I said before, the singular word joy doesn't appear first until, what is it, uh, 1 Samuel. But the word joyous or joyful or something, or joyfully, a uh, variation of the word joy appears in the, the book of Deuteronomy. Very first book. We're not talking about joy today. We're talking about happy because everybody, with all the pending disaster that's coming upon us, all the financial hardships that are uh, approaching people, you got these guys like that Joseph Prince. He... he there's this thing called emo. I don't know if you've heard of it. I hope you haven't. Um, it's a it's a uh, it's a mix between what is called a gothic style and a punk style, and they blend it together. It's disgusting. And uh, there's this thing called an emo male. Or, it's just so gross. Joseph Prince reminds me of an emo man with their big smiles talking to you about God wants you to be happy while well, these guys have millions at their disposals. So much. They have mansions, houses, and cars. And yet these are the people who are telling you how to be happy. Hmm. There's a difference between happiness and joy. We're going to talk about joy in another video later on within the week. Today we're talking about happy. You know, you could be happy and have no joy. You can have joy and have no happiness. You can have the best that the world offers you and think that you're happy and it, that it's joy to you, but it's a fleeting thing. Happiness doesn't last. Joy is eternal. And people will have joy in their possessions and mistake happiness for joy. But then it flees away. In context. You can have joy being of the church of the living God, knowing that to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. But if you don't live according to the way he say, you can be miserable. Go against the scriptures. Live contrary to what he says. And then fool yourself with little morsels of happiness through worldly means, but in, in reality, you're poor, you're miserable, you're naked and blind. But yet, if you are of the church of the living God, you have that joy in you that no matter how you mess up, to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. See, you can have joy and have no happiness. You can be happy and have no joy. And see, what so many Christians are doing. Okay? And by the way, I'm not a Christian. I'm not. Oh, no, I'm not. I'm of the Church of the Living God. Okay? <laughs> you read some of the uh, writings of the Jewish um, Orthodox sometimes. Then you can see what Catholicism has done to what is called Christian. And why so many people want to associate unto Christian things that come from Catholicism. And you want to call yourself that. But that's between you and the Lord. That's between you and the Lord. It's for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. But see, so many of those Christians, they're blurring the line and confusing to you what is happiness and what is joy. And today, Lord willing... We're going to, at least for today, show the difference between what is true happiness and what the world calls happy. Okay? Because remember now, 
Go to 1 Timothy chapter 6. 1 Timothy chapter 6. 1 Timothy chapter 6, of course we would have to touch on this. 1 Timothy chapter 6, verses 5 on to verse 11. Perverse disputing of men of corrupt minds and destitute of the truth, supposing that gain is godliness. From such withdraw thyself. Now, godliness in context to scripture is what? Being separate other, my thoughts are not your thoughts, my ways are not your ways, being other separate than that, which is holy, other than, okay? There's a difference between holy and godliness too. But see, godliness, godliness, being separate other than this, okay? But see, unto these Christians who are preaching to you, God wants you to be happy. Godliness unto them is possession and affluence and position. And as the church of the living God, what is our position? Dirt. Dust. But unto the Christian who preaches to you happiness, worldly happiness, not scriptural happiness, affluence, position, prosperity. Yeah. But godliness, okay, being separate, with contentment is great gain. Again, there's a difference between contentment and happiness. By the way, things that are different, they ain't the same. See, words are important. They really are. But godliness with contentment is great gain. You can be content and not be happy. <laughs> How many of you? You're content, but you're not happy. If only you had a little bit more, right? You can have joy and not be content. And when you think about that, we as a church of the living God, while we are home in the body, we are absent from the Lord. So when you're comfortable down here, there's something wrong, Jack. Now that doesn't mean that you got to purposely make your life miserable or no, no, no. But I mean... Is this your home? Is this your home? Is it? Is it really? Is it really your home? So well, no, my place is with Jesus Christ. Amen. As it ought to be. But see, what happens is, especially in these times, people get their focus out of whack and they concentrate on... This stuff. And then you get these Christians with their big smiles telling you how they've succeeded, how they're happy because they have the best that the world has. And oh, and don't forget to give them your money, your tithes and offerings and stuff like that. Yeah. Phil Robinson. Yeah. Buy his new book that's at Walmart. Yeah. Yeah. The guy has millions of reasons to be happy. <laughs> if you fall down and worship me, all shall be thine. Who said that? What's in our Lord Jesus Christ? I'll tell you that much. Let's continue. For we brought nothing into this world and it is certain we can carry nothing out. And having food and raiment, let us be therewith content. Now, right away you argue, well, well, okay, okay, hold on, time out, time out. Paul didn't have wife and kids and that kind of, No, he did not. You are right, and that is right. That is true. The point is to be content with the simple necessities, and anything else is a luxury. And what happens is people are basing the luxury upon happiness, and vice versa. Happiness based upon the luxuries. When true happiness comes with joy in the Holy Ghost, 
in our Lord Jesus Christ. And therewith lies contentment. See what we're getting at? But they that will be rich fall into temptation and a snare. Rich, again, does not just denote money. Notoriety, fame, popularity, position, affluence, luxury. A freezer full of meat. A, refriger a refrigerator stock full to feed a hundred people. And having food and raiment, let us be there with content. Brethren, people, people, listen to me. Okay? You think all this is over, it's not. Okay? The world is driving into your head what Satan calls happiness. And then you have Christians in their buildings, on the TV, through their books that you buy at Walmart, with their big smiles, telling you what is happiness. I have a big problem with someone who has the best that the world has to offer telling me how to be happy. I have a big problem with that. I would believe and listen more so onto a homeless man who had the joy of the Lord within him and telling me about what it means to be happy. I would sit and listen to him and talk with him more than one of these millionaire Christians, one of these Christians who's got it well to do. Now, now granted, let's be fair. God can give and provide for you these luxuries, absolutely. But see, when you start to put your stock in the blessing and take it away from the blessor, there's a problem. There's a problem. There's a big problem there. And see, so many want you to pay attention. To the water, but not the bottle that holds the water. Ah. See what I'm saying? But they that will be rich fall into temptation and a snare, and into many foolish and hurtful lusts, which drown men in destruction and perdition. For the love of money, for the love of money, is the root of all evil. Which while some coveted after, they have erred from the faith and pierced themselves through with many sorrows. Yeah, because you get a lot of baggage, worldly baggage, don't you? And remember, you're not going to take any of it with you, dear friend. But thou, O man of God, flee these things. And follow after righteousness, godliness, faith, love, patience. Proverbs chapter 13. Proverbs chapter 13. Verses 6 and 7. Righteousness keepeth him that is upright in the way. Whose righteousness? Our Lord's. But the wicked, but wickedness overthroweth the sinner. There is that maketh himself rich, yet hath nothing. Hmm. There is that maketh himself poor, yet hath great riches. Read the book of Ecclesiastes sometime. Read it once a month, twice a month. Okay? That'll help you get a really good perspective on what we're talking about. Happy. As I said, the word happy appears 28 or 29 times within Scripture. The word happiness, the word happiness does not appear in Scripture. Happier does, but happiness does not appear in Scripture. The words happy and joy 
do not appear in one verse together. Now, happy and joy will appear in a chapter or in a psalm, because a psalm is not a chapter, thank you. But yes, happy and joy will appear within a context, within a, a chapter or in a psalm, but happy and joy together in a verse, you will not find it. It's not there. Things that are different are not the same. Happiness is a byproduct of what? Of what? That's, that's what needs to be differentiated. That's what needs to be differentiated. See, see, you could be saved of the church of the living God, sealed unto the day of redemption. And the joy that we have as the church of the living God is to be absent from this, the skin suit, the body, is to be present with the Lord. To be done with all of this, all the health problems, all the vision problems, the aches and the pains. That's joy that we're going to be with our Lord. But see, you don't live right. You don't even make an attempt to live right. You will find happiness in worldly things. Now, Yes, God can and will use worldly things, giving me, like, you know, uh, this. This is a luxury. He will give you those things. But see, you can't take your eyes off of the blessor and fixate it upon the blessing. And you as a church of the living God, you don't live right. Oh, you could be miserable. Not living, walking according to the scripture. Hmm? giving yourself over to worldliness, you're going to be miserable. But yet you'll have joy because you know when you're done, when it's all said and done, you're going to be with the Lord. But see, the Christians out there are talking to you about happiness, happy, 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 joy, joy, joy. And they're blurring the two. And they have no joy because they're not saved. You can have happiness and no joy. You can have joy and have no happiness. If you have happiness and no joy, or your joy might, you might confuse for happiness, hmm. let's look at this. Happy. Now, we're not going to look at all 28 or 29 appearances of the word happy. <laughs> we're going to get close to it, but we're not going to look at every single occurrence. Uh, like I said, next week when we get to the joy because this is going to be kind of a series in a way. When we get to joy, we're not going to get to all the 169 occurrences of joy either. But we are going to see a clear difference between these. First reference. Go to Genesis chapter 30. Genesis chapter 30. Things that are different are not the same. Now, I utilize what is known as the law of first mention. And yes, law of first mention is not in scripture okay bravo okay but what that means is the first time a word appears usually seven out of ten times it defines the word now you got to remember context is the true definition of a word for example wisdom is generally equated onto what the fear of the lord but in every appearance of the word wisdom is not a reference onto the fear of the lord that's defined by context but generally when you say wisdom in accordance with scripture it's the fear of the lord okay okay you see context is the de definition of a word in and of itself but like i said law first mentioned usually seven out of ten times when you come upon a word in scripture where it first appears, it's usually defined within the context. And that's usually the way it is used within scripture. There are variations, like I said, with wisdom and several others that you can find. Okay, but it's context, people. Context, context. You know, what's in between the sandwich. Okay, okay. Genesis chapter 30. Genesis chapter 30. Now, what is happiness in accordance to Scripture? Okay, never mind what the Christians tell you. Never mind what the world tells you. What does God tell you what happy is? That's what we're looking at. 
Never mind them. Okay. Speak, Lord, for your servants heareth. Now, Genesis chapter 30 is talking about Rachel and Leah, the women who bear unto Jacob the 12 sons of Jacob, the 12 sons of Israel. There, there's another example, too. Things that are different are not the same. Okay. While Jacob and Israel denote one man in uh, one man specifically, Jacob supplanter Israel, prince with God and man, two different things, but yet one man. Oh, maybe because he had a yeah, made a new creature. <laughs> but see, but it's talking about childbearing, childbirth. Okay, bringing forth of children. Okay. A provision of the Lord. The very first appearance of happy, okay? In context, read the context on your own time. But here's the very first appearance of the word happy in all of Scripture. Genesis chapter 30, verse 13. And, and look at what how it's being used. And Leah said, Leah, the unloved wife, the unfavored wife, we shall say, but yet highly favored of the Lord. Why? Because did not our Lord spring from Judah? And from whom sprang Judah? Jacob. We know that. Thank you. But from Leah. From Leah. Okay? The unloved one. Don't miss that. Oh, we can go off. Of, we can go off on some really good rabbit trails on that. But we don't have enough teriyaki or hot sauce to cover that today. But, okay? And Leah said, Happy am I. For the daughters will call me blessed. And she called his name Asher. Asher means happy, not blessed, by the way. Asher means happy. Okay? And Leah said, Happy am I. For the daughters will call me blessed. And she called his name Asher. Why? Why would they call her blessed? Because she brought in children. To her husband Jacob. The fruit of the womb is his reward. Okay. So happy here in context is what? Bringing in children into the world. Birthing children. Bringing in men children. Women children. Into the, wor uh, into the world. Okay. So it is a form of God's provision. Bringing children. Childbearing. Bringing children into this world. It's a form of his provision, especially in the context here. Okay? Let's look a little bit more at that. Go to Psalm 127. Psalm 127. Okay? Happiness comes from joy in the Lord, according to Scripture. The world and the Christians of this world will tell you happiness is in the blessing. And we just saw it. Yes, it is. But, 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 Psalm 127, Psalm 127 on that. Except the Lord build the house, they labor in vain that build it. Except the Lord keep the city, the watchman wa waketh, but in vain. Unless it is of the Lord, True happiness and true hap to be truly happy in accordance with Scripture. It comes from the Lord first. And Leah is the unloved. The blessing came from the Lord. Okay? It is vain for you to rise up early, to sit up late, to eat the bread of sorrows, for so he giveth his beloved sleep. Okay? See, happiness and uh, happy to be happy because happiness doesn't appear in Scripture. To be truly happy stems first from what? The Lord. The true Lord of the Scriptures. Not that son of perdition whom the Christians are preaching to you. Okay? Lo, verse 3. Children are the heritage of the Lord. Happy am I, for the daughter shall call me blessed. Lo, children are the heritage of the Lord, and the fruit of the womb 
is his, is his reward. And you have it today, especially here in America, where how, how who knows how many legalized murders there are done every day with abortions. Where a couple of people in fornication want to go and have a good time because they're getting their mind poisoned through the television and through all that kind of nonsense. And they go and fornicate. And then the woman be with child. And because they just wanted to fornicate and didn't want the fruit of the womb... Murder the child. Lo, children are in heritage of the Lord. And the fruit of the womb is his reward. As arrows are in the hand of a mighty man. Keeping this in mind with what we just looked at about Leah. Okay. As arrows are in the hand of a mighty man. So are the children of the youth. Happy. Is the man that hath his quiver full of them. Quiver, that's the thing that holds arrows. They shall not be ashamed, but they shall speak with the enemies in the gate. Who is the they? The children. See, a man's name will continue on through his children. Okay? I'm saying his because you women, you sisters, you get married, you take on your husband's name. Unless you know, well, we want to be professional. She, you know, doesn't want, no, 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 no. You take on your husband's name. The two shall be one flesh. Okay? And remember, the woman was made for the man, not the man for the woman. Okay? You got to remember that. But happy is the man that hath his quiver full of them. And what does it say here? In verse 3, Lo, children are the heritage of the Lord. And the fruit of the womb is his reward. Verse 5. Happy is the man that hath his quiver full of them. They shall not be ashamed. But they, his children, shall speak with the enemies in the gate. So, children, childbearing, is a provision, a blessing, a reward of the Lord. Hence, something that the Lord allots you. Be happy. Happy, happy. Now, we got to read Psalm 128 because it goes in with Psalm 127. See, blessed is everyone that feareth the Lord, fearing and standing in awe, even though we are to stand in awe of the Lord, absolutely. Fear and awe are again two totally different things. You can be like awestruck, like, wow, did he just do what? His what hurts? Huh? And there's another thing to fall at one's feet as dead. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Th these Christians telling you about to be happy just because of worldly things. Oh, they acknowledge God. They aren't acknowledging the God of Scripture. They, as it were, sold themselves to do wickedness, to get this world's goods. And who's the one who promises them the world's good? If they fall down and worship him, that'd be Satan. Okay? Guys like uh, Phil Robinson. And all those guys. You know. <laughs> Blessed is everyone that feareth the Lord, that walketh in his ways. You can have the fear of the Lord, be saved, born again in the church of the living God, new creature in Christ Jesus. But are you walking in his ways? Ooh. If you're not. <laughs> if you're not. Eh, you will. You could have joy. But are you happy with what the Lord gives? Why should you be if you're not walking in his ways? For thou shalt eat the labor of thine hands. Amen. You reap what you sow. Happy shalt thou be, and it shall be well with thee. Why? What's the condition? That walketh in his ways. Well, that doesn't matter for today in this dispensation, because you're going to heaven. Yeah, if you truly are saved, yes, that is true. But, 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 dear friend, your testimony will be destroyed. Your life is going to be miserable. 
And then you're going to resort to what the world tells you to be happy, and it will be like a drug, because you'll, keep the need, you'll need to keep filling it up. If you have the fear of the Lord, if you have the Lord within you, that is joy, and He will produce in you the byproduct of that joy is happiness. To be happy. It starts with the Lord within you. Thy wife shall be as a fruitful vine by the sides of thy house. Here again, going with the children thing. Thy children like olive plants round about thy table. Behold, that thus shall the man be blessed that feareth the Lord. The Lord shall bless thee out of Zion. And thou shalt see the good of Jerusalem all the days of thy life. Yea, thou shalt see thy children's children and peace on Israel. So, being with child, bringing children into the world, that is what? Lo, the children are the heritage of the Lord, and the fruit of his womb is his reward. So, because of the fear of the Lord, the blessing of the Lord, you bringing children, hence, be happy by what the Lord has provided. Be happy in children. Children are a blessing, not a curse. And woe unto all of you who sees a child as a curse. Especially when you've got people, hello, who can't have children. So, children being happy. Because why? They are the blessing of the Lord. Child is the reward from the Lord. And blessed is everyone that feareth the Lord that walketh in his ways. You can bring a child out into the world by fornication. Still, that's a reward. But yet, here in America especially, no. It's a mistake because of two who fornicated. So go murder it. The Lord will rebuke you and have mercy on your wicked heart and your wicked soul. Now go to Deuteronomy chapter 33. Deuteronomy chapter 33. We want verses 26 on to verse 29. In Deuteronomy chapter 33, verses 26 on to verse 29, the close of the chapter. Now, we're going to notice something here. There is none like unto the God of Jeshurun. Hinge that, Jeshurun, because we're going to look at that word. What is Jeshurun? Who is Jeshurun? We're going to look at that, okay? There is none like unto the God of Jeshurun, who rideth upon the heaven in thy help, in his excellency on the sky. The eternal God is thy refuge. And underneath are the everlasting arms. And he shall thrust out the enemy from before thee, and shall say, Destroy them. Israel then shall dwell in safety alone. The fountain of Jacob shall be upon a land of corn and wine. Also his heaven shall drop down dew. Happy art thou, O Israel, who is like unto thee, O people, saved by the Lord, the shield of thy help, and who is the sword of thy excellency? Hold up. Happy. In what? O people saved by the Lord. What he has done. It is finished. Okay? Happy. Happy. Yes. In that. Yes. The shield of thy help. Shield of thy help. He helps us. He provides. You can be happy in that. Absolutely. Amen. Who is the sword? The sword of thy excellency. Amen. Amen. And thine enemy shall be found liars unto thee. Mm -hmm. And thou shalt tread upon their high places. Mm. Very interesting. Very interesting. So yes, we can have hap we can be happy in what the Lord gives us. Salvation 
It's not entitled to us. It is a gift given unto us when we come to the Lord on his terms. Okay? The shield of thy help. Okay? If we deny him, he will deny us. Not salvation in this dispensation, but help, mercy, grace, provision. And who is the sword of thy excellency. Approve the ways that are most excellent. How do you do that? Search the scriptures daily, whether these things be so. Okay? You see? Happiness is a byproduct of the Lord. To be happy. God, stop saying happiness because happiness doesn't appear in scripture, even though happiness is a word. Okay? But, okay? Happy art thou, O Israel. Who is like unto thee? <laughs> Who is like unto thee? Saved of the Lord, who is the shield of thy help, and who is and the sword of thy excellency. Are we not ambassadors for Christ? Have we not the ministry of reconciliation and the word of reconciliation? But I want us to look at Jeshurun. Jeshurun appears only three times in Scripture, all within the book of Deuteronomy. Now we see verse 26. There is none like unto the God of Jeshurun. Capital G, Jeshurun. This is not the first appearance of the word Jeshurun. Turn to Deuteronomy chapter 32. Deuteronomy chapter 32. We want verses 12 on to verse 18. Now, this is Old Testament. Absolutely. This is under the law. Absolutely. This is to instruct us a little bit, okay? Okay? This is what happy is, according to Scripture. But what's interesting is we're going to see how happy, happy kind of is tweaked a little bit after the death, burial, and resurrection. Because what did these people not have as a permanent residence that we today have? Yes. They didn't have the seal of the Holy Ghost in this dispensation. Eternally secure. There was no eternal security. There wasn't the seal, permanent seal of the Holy Ghost. Big difference. That's why this is instruction. See? Okay. Now, let's read. Deuteronomy 32, verses 12 on to verse 18. So the Lord alone did lead him. Okay? And there was no strange God with him. He made him ride on the high places of the earth that he might eat the increase of the fields. Provision. Provision. Okay? And he made him to suck honey out of the rock, lowercase r, and oil out of the flint rock, also lowercase r. Okay? Provision. Provision. Providence. Okay? Butter of kind and milk of sheep, with fat of lambs and rams of the breed of Bashan, and goats with the fat of kidneys of wheat, and thou didst drink the pure blood of the grape. When you walk right with the Lord, he gives you these luxuries, because we already looked at having food and raiment, let us be there with content. Talking about uh, food and raiment right here. Food, definitely. Okay? Definitely. First appearance of Jeshurun coming up. But Jeshurun waxed fat and kicked. Thou art waxen fat. Thou art grown thick. Thou art covered with fatness. Well, we, we just looked at God's provision, God's blessing for doing it his way. Look at Solomon. Look at King Solomon. Look at how he was blessed. I, I believe we're actually going to touch on that. And yes, we are. Yes, we are. We are actually going to touch on that. Okay? But look at King Solomon. And look at what all the blessing did unto him. We are going to look at that, so don't worry. Okay? But Jeshurun wax fat. Wax fat, why? Because of the goodness of the Lord. So Jeshurun is what? Someone who's fat? 
fat because of why? The blessing of the Lord. To be happy in the blessing of the Lord, yes, but to not be mindful of the one who's blessing, but rather being so fixated on the blessing itself. <laughs> the danger. And see, that, see, this is what the Christians are making you focus on, the blessing. And when they point you to, to a blessor, not the blessor, they're pointing you to Satan. Oh, I'm a millionaire! Good for you, Mr. Robertson. <laughs> Pull your hair out of your teeth. Ugh. But Jeshurun, wax fat and kick. Thou art wax and fat. Thou art grown thick. Thou art covered with fatness because of the Lord's provision. Then, note this, then he forsook God which made him and lightly esteemed the capital R, which is Christ, rock of his salvation. Oh, and there's so many examples within the kings. He was, uh, I forget who it was. I think it might have been Uzziah. I, I might be wrong about that offhand. But he, he was marvelously helped until he was strong. But when he was strong, then he forsook the Lord. Hezekiah! Hezekiah! was given 15 years. And then the dunderhead brings in the enemy, boasts about, look at all this I have. Hezekiah in heaven. Uzziah, I think it was Uzziah. I might be wrong on that. But uh, the other guy, also in heaven. But see, they got fixated on the stuff. And were boastful of the stuff rather than the one who is giving them the stuff. You see? And see, they want you to focus on the stuff. And who's the one who's giving this stuff? Who's answering the prayers? Don't worry, that'll be in the description box, okay? They provoked him to jealousy with strange gods. Again, another thing. Jealousy and envy. Two different things. Okay? They provoked him to jealousy with strange gods. With abominations provoked they him to anger. They sacrificed unto devils. Not to God. To gods whom they knew not. To new gods that came newly up whom your fathers feared not. Ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. Ye, man, shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. Being to judge, you know, that, okay, now you can know what is good and evil. Where before in the, uh, in the Garden of Eden, you only knew what good was because you only knew God. But you disobey and you take Satan's bait. Okay? So to new gods that came newly up, there ain't nothing new under the sun. Things that are common are common, and it is known that it is what? It is man. So, to gods whom they knew not, to new gods that came newly up, whom your fathers feared not. Oh, there are a lot of men out there who people see as gods. Ain't that right, Mr. Uh, trash Disposer, huh? Yeah. Yeah. Little idolatry any, uh, you got there going there, pal, huh? Just maybe a little bit? Hmm? Ain't got time for that. Verse 18. Of the capital R rock that begat thee, Thou art, unmind, thou art unmindful and hast forgotten God that formed thee. Joshua, someone who is highly favored of the Lord. There's another appearance in Deuteronomy chapter 33, now verses 1 on to verse 5. Okay? 
Jeshurun is what? Someone who is waxed fat because of God's provision. And yes, we are to be in have, happy in what the Lord provides. Yes, we are. Yes, we are. But you gotta, it's got to be in its proper place, brethren. This is a luxury. Having food and raiment. Let us be there with content. <laughs> Seek ye first the kingdom of God. And then all these things will be added on to you because our Lord knows that you have need of these things. Okay? We don't need a house. It's a luxury. You don't need a car. That's a luxury. You don't need a thousand acres with 20 mansions and a swimming pool. That's idolatry. <laughs> okay? Deuteronomy chapter 33, verses 1 on to verse 5. And this is the blessing wherewith Moses, the man of God, blessed the children of Israel before his death. And he said, The Lord came from Sinai and rose up from Seir unto them. He shined forth from Mount Paran, and he came with ten thousands of his of saints. From his right hand went a fiery law for them. And of course, verse 2, you can tie that into the book of Jude, where he will come with ten thousands of his saints and stuff. And this is not from the book of Enoch. Okay. Yea, he loved the people. Why? Because uh, for the father's sakes, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Okay. Yea, he loved the people. All his saints are in thy hand, and they sat down at thy feet. Every one shall receive of thy words. Moses commanded us a law, even the inheritance of the congregation of Jacob. And he was king in Cheshron. When the heads of the people and the tribes of Israel were gathered together, he was king in Jeshron. So Jeshron is someone who is waxen fat, because of the Lord's provision. But see, but Jeshurun waxed fat. Okay? And kick. Jeshurun waxed fat. He got fat. Why? Jeshurun means someone who is provided for by the Lord. Someone, the highly favored of the Lord. Okay? And because of his favor, because of his provision, yes, you can get a little fat. Yes, you can. But see, you can be happy. And what the Lord allows you, what he provides you. Absolutely! It's when you're more happier in that than having squalor and yet having great joy. And see, the Christians and so many of what you see on television, and, oh, wow, they want to confuse joy with happiness. That you're not going to be joy, joyous unless you're happy. You can have lots of great joy, but have no happiness. Okay? Now, like I told you, Solomon, go to 1 Kings chapter 10. 1 Kings chapter 10. 1 Kings chapter 10. He, here's a guy who had the... Read Ecclesiastes again, okay? Please, read it. Once a month, twice a month. Read it, Okay? Uh, the first is going to be Tuesday, okay? The first of the month. First proverb, first Ecclesiastes, first song of song. You should do more, but do that. I challenge you. Starting March, the first of March. Begin your day with God in prayer. Begin also with at least the proverb one, Ecclesiastes one, and song of songs one, okay? And go with the corresponding day. I challenge you to do that. At least, okay? But, okay? King Solomon. King Solomon. He started off good, but as we see with so many of these Christians who get to a pinnacle, and they get there, and they get the blessings. They are just run. How many of them wax fat and kick? I wonder. And please, please, 
the people that you see on TV in these buildings, yes, they are Christians. Like I told you, look up some of the Orthodox uh, Jews, their writings on Christianity. And they have a right to write those kinds of things. Why? Because of Catholicism. Because remember, Catholics are Christians. Because of Catholicism. What is Christian? Christianity has been permanently stained. It needs to be done away with. Okay? That's just me. That's just me. Okay? But 1 Kings chapter 10, verses 4 on to verse 9. And when the queen of Sheba had seen all Solomon's wisdom, and the house that he had built, and the meat of his table, and the sitting of his servants, and the attendance of his ministers, and their apparel, and his cupbearers, and his ascent, by which he went up unto the house of the Lord, there was no more spirit in her. And she said to the king, It was a true report that I heard in mine own land of thy acts and of thy wisdom. Howbeit I believed not the words until I came and mine eyes had seen it. And behold, the half was not told me. Thy wisdom and prosperity exceedeth the, very, the fame which I heard. Now, remember how we looked at Jeshurun? Happy are thy men. Happy are these thy servants, which stand continually, continually before thee, and that hear thy wisdom. Happy, happy. Verse 8. Why? Because of provision. Because of blessing. Okay. Blessed be the Lord thy God, which delighted in thee. Note it says delighted, not delighteth. Delighted in thee. Oh, could it be King Solomon was messing up right around this time? I, I reckon so. I reckon so. Blessed be the Lord thy God, which delighted in thee to set thee on the throne of Israel, because the Lord loved Israel forever. Therefore made he thee king to do judgment and justice. And 1 Kings chapter 3, 1 Kings chapter 3, Solomon started out really good. But, but, but Solomon had a really, really, really big problem. Okay? Number one, the Lord... Got, 1 Kings chapter 3, we want verses 5 on to verse 14. 1 Kings chapter 3, verses 5 on to verse 14. In Gabaon, the Lord appeared to Solomon in a dream by night, and God said, Ask what I shall give thee. And see these, these twit prosperity devils. They come to something like this. God wants you to ask, they, they go to that scripture and pervert it. Command ye me, you know, and they twist that and say, command God to give you a financial, shut up, the Lord rebuke you. No, but in fact, God did say, ask what I shall give thee. I want you to think about this, brother, sister. If the Lord came to you, seriously, Seriously, the Lord came to you and said to you, ask what I shall give thee, knowing that th there's nothing too hard for the Lord. What would you ask? What would you ask for? World peace, that's impossible because there's a time and place for everything under heaven and judgment is coming upon this world. So uh, that doesn't count. But what would you ask for? What would you ask for? Seriously? I would ask that 
one of some uh, one of the most wicked men I've ever met in my life who's going to hell. I would ask that the Lord save him. If I if that ever were to happen to me, that the Lord would save the most wicked, vile, disgusting, foul-mouthed man I've ever met in my life. If the Lord was like bread, ask what I should give you. Save so-and-so. And I mean that. And Solomon said, now Solomon started out really good. Solomon said, thou hast shewed unto thy servant David my father great mercy, according as he walked before thee in truth and in righteousness and in uprightness of heart with thee. And thou hast kept for him this great kindness that thou hast given him a son to sit on his throne as it is this day. And now, O Lord my God, Thou hast made thy servant king instead of David my father. And I am but a little child. I know not how to go out or to or come in. And thy servant is in the midst of thy people, which thou hast chosen, a great people that cannot be numbered nor counted for multitude. Look what he asks for. Give therefore thy servant an understanding heart. Selfish! To judge thy people. You know, when I when I have asked the Lord for wisdom, it's not for myself that I could give to share with you what the Lord gives me through the scriptures. I share with you what the Lord shares with me in scripture. Okay? Okay? And talk and remember how I uh, give, therefore, thy servant an understanding heart understanding heart departing from evil okay to judge thy people that I may discern between good and bad for who is able to judge this thy so great a people and what's interesting about verse 9 Solomon says what that I may discern between good and bad what did Satan do to Eve Disobey, and your eyes shall be open, and ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. Very interesting contrast, isn't it? Isn't it? And the speech pleased the Lord that Solomon had asked this thing. And God said unto him, Because thou hast asked this thing, and hast not asked for thyself long life, Neither has asked riches for thyself. And these, these, these people, these Christians who, oh, I'm a millionaire, or like to tell you of their financial exploits. Did they ask for that? Did they receive that or ask for that for themselves first? Yeah, they did. They weren't like, oh, Lord, if you give me something, then I'm going to give it away. I'm not going to keep it. I'm sure there are many out there who uh, who go to the Lord with that. But see, the, the premise is wrong. Okay? You're seeking the Lord for what he gives, not for what he is. Okay? He gives you everything. Yes, he does. Yes, he does. And that's why you go to him, because who he is and what he can give you. But if that's the only reason why, if he, is, if he is to you just someone who gives you something, and he is, absolutely not denying that, because salvation is a gift, right? Amen. Yes. And we seek him for his forgiveness. Yes. Right. Amen. Praise the Lord. But we are going to him. Why? Because he is God. He is our Father. He loved us. Okay? That's why we go to him. Not just. Not just. To be wiped clean. That happens when you come to him on his terms. 
But if he is just only someone to give you something and not your father, <laughs> though he slay me, yet will I trust in him? You're, you're missing something. There's something terribly wrong there with you, my dear friend. Something terribly wrong. And see, when you have a view of God as that, what tends to result from that? You be fixated on things of flesh. Yeah, buddy. Look at him. Mm. <laughs> Look at him, okay? Hmm. And God said unto him, Because thou hast asked this thing, and hast not asked for thyself long life, neither hast asked riches for thyself, nor hast asked, asked the life of thine enemies, but hast asked for thyself understanding to discern judgment. Behold, I have done according to thy words. Lo, I have given thee a wise and an understanding heart, so that there was none like thee before thee, neither after thee shall any arise like unto thee. And I have also given thee. This is, a, this is the generosity of the Lord when you put him first. Okay? And I have also given thee that which thou hast not asked. When you stop and think about what the Lord has given you of what you have not asked, and just to throw this in there, what if God gave you everything you truly asked for? Wow! Whoa! Huh? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Praise the Lord that he didn't give me everything I've ever asked for. Oh, thank the Lord. Oh, thank the Lord. You, th you roll that around in your head a little bit. Okay? You roll that around in your head a little bit. Hmm? You think about that. Yeah, and let that grind you to powder for a little while there, boy. Yeah, buddy, okay? Behold, I have done according to thy words. Lo, I have given... Okay, we already, we already read that. Verse 13. And I have also given thee that which thou hast not asked, both riches and honor, so that there shall not be any among the kings like unto thee all thy days. Don't, don't look at me. Look at that first verse, verse 14. Look at that. And, and, and you know what? Here's what you do. Take your pen. Draw a little circle around that two-lettered word, if. Um, I forget who it was who did a video on ifs. Very good. I forget who did that. Forget who did that. Anyway, uh, where was it? Okay, verse 14. And if thou wilt walk in my ways to keep my statutes and my commandments as thy father David did walk, then I will lengthen thy days. If. Conditional clause. Today, our salvation is secure. But our life down here is conditional. You and me, we're saved of the church of the living God. We're, we're going to heaven no matter what. We can't lose what is not ours to, to lose or gain. Okay? We're saved. Once saved, always saved. Absolutely. You dispute that, you're a heretic. Absolutely. Absolutely. You're once saved, always saved. Even most of the... Uh, easy believism devils will at least give adherence to once saved, always saved, because that is a doctrine of scripture, absolutely. But see, once saved, always saved, yeah. But if you don't do it the way God says, you're not going to be happy. Your life is going to be miserable. It's going to be a wreck. There's that if that does apply today, not salvifically conditionally to the terms of our walk. You know what I'm saying, brother? Hi. <laughs> and Solomon awoke. And behold, it was a dream. And he came to Jerusalem and stood before the ark of the covenant of the Lord and offered up burnt offerings and offered peace offerings and made a feast to all his servants. 
King Solomon had all the things on, on earth to be happy for. The Lord gave him what he didn't ask. The Lord gave us what we have not asked. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. But, but you know what Solomon's biggest problem was? He had this problem with flesh. Like we all do. Okay? But he had a really big problem with flesh. Oh, just, just, <laughs> just two verses in 1 Kings chapter 11. Solomon, blessed of the Lord. His people were happy when he was doing right by the Lord. And I believe that Solomon is in heaven. I really do. But, uh, <laughs> but King Solomon loved many strange women. Yeah. Together with the daughter of Pharaoh, women of the Moabites, Ammonites, Edomites, Sidonians, and Hittites, of the nations concerning which the Lord said unto the children of Israel, Ye shall not go into them, neither shall they come in unto you, for surely they will turn away your heart after their gods. Solomon, clave unto these in love. Yeah, Solomon was a player. The ultimate player. He had a flesh problem. How is that a flesh problem? He was going after women. And that's going after flesh. Okay? Okay? Can't get away from that. Okay? So, God's provision, His blessing in providing for you for doing things His way, it begins with the Lord first. Because you can have all the happiness in the world, but you will have no joy. And what happens with people like that? Their happiness, they're happy, what they think is joy, but they're confusing with happiness. It lasts. And then they got to go get a new car. They got to go get a new girlfriend or boyfriend. They got to go get a new set of clothes. They need, they always need something new. And granted, we are refreshed every day by the Lord, but see, they're new and there's no new thing under the sun. Okay? They're new is worldly things. And that's something. Psalm 137. Now, this is one of the occurrences where happy and joy appear within the same thing. Not the same verse. Not the same verse. Okay? But within the same within the same psalm. Okay? There are several times, but you do not see happy and joy together in the same verse. Okay? Because things that are different are not the same. Okay? Psalm 137. And here is something that might throw some people. Okay? Big part. Now, in the video on joy, we will also cover this. But we will concentrate more on the joy aspect. Today we are going to concentrate on the happy, okay? Now, this might throw people. But we're going to dis we're going to explain this, okay? And I might unfortunately have to cut some of these verses out uh, because we've only got three hours. And it's already at an hour and 23 minutes, okay? So, but Psalm 137. This is a psalm book of captivity. Keep that in your mind, okay? By the rivers of Babylon, Psalm 137. By the rivers of Babylon, there we sat down. Yea, we wept when we remembered Zion. We hanged our harps on the willows in the midst thereof. For there they that carried us away captive required of us a song. And they that wasted us required of us mirth, saying, Sing us one of the songs of Zion. How shall we sing the Lord's song in a strange land? If I forget thee, O Jerusalem, let my right hand forget her cunning. If I do not remember thee, let my tongue cleave to the roof of my, jaw, my mouth, if I prefer not Jerusalem, and what is significant about Jerusalem? It is the city of the great king. That is where he set his name. Okay? 
Jerusalem, synonymous with God. Jerusalem, uh, well, I forget what Jerusalem, Jeru means, but Salem, peace. Salem is peace. God's peace, okay, is Jerusalem, okay? If I prefer not Jerusalem above my chief, joy. Okay, there's the mention of joy. We're not going to go off on that in this video. That'll be in the next one. But remember, O Lord, the children of Edom in the day of Jerusalem, who said, raise it, R-A-S-E, raise it, raise it even to the foundation thereof. Now, here's what might throw people. O daughter of Babylon, who are to be destroyed, Happy shall he be that rewardeth thee as thou hast served us. What? And right here. Happy shall he be that taketh and dasheth thy little ones against the stones. Wait a second. So, okay. Someone is going to be happy for doing an eye for an eye, tooth for a tooth. And someone's going to be happy for dashing thy little ones against the stones. You know what that is? That's taking a little child by the feet and smacking it against a rock. What? What? God just said, in God's word, someone's going to be happy? For dashing a little one against the stone? In context to Babylon, there are things you have to remember. Okay? Number one, you read the book of Jeremiah, Jeremiah chapter 50, I believe it is. Okay? And, and we're gonna we're gonna go we're gonna get to that here in a second. But let's go to Deuteronomy chapter 32. Okay. <laughs> Here's something that a lot of you now, and I know God doesn't take any joy in the death of the wicked, but that all would repent. But there are those out there who are not going to repent. You can Ezekiel, what, what is that? Ezekiel 18 me all day in the comments if you want to. Okay, what's the condition? He has no uh, pleasure in the death of the wicked, but that the wicked would what? Repent! Okay? Okay? Yes! He doesn't take pleasure in the death of the wicked. Yes, God would have all men to be saved. Yes, but see, that requires scriptural repentance, godly sorrow, turning from self-righteousness, and calling on the name of the Lord in fear, and asking Him to save you. Okay? But not everybody's going to do that. And you hear the truth of that and reject that. You're his enemy. Okay? All right? Look, you know, in the red words in Scripture and uh, Revelation, our Lord Jesus Christ says, I will kill her children with death. The God of the Scriptures kills people. You might not like to hear that. That is a fact. Okay? He, he's there. He delighteth in mercy. He would rather be merciful. <laughs> he's not forcing you, good friend. Okay? But Deuteronomy chapter 32, verses 30 on to verse 38. How should one chase a thousand and two put ten thousand to flight? Except their capital R, rock, had sold them and the Lord had shut them up. And that rock was Christ. For their rock, lowercase r, is not as our rock, capital R. Even our enemies themselves being judges, we've talked about this before, you shall know them by their fruits. Those who have the little R God for their God, the Christians, take a look at them. But those who are, have the Lord Jesus Christ, our Father, the capital R Rock, 
There ain't that many of us. Okay? For their vine... Oh, I lost. For their vine is the vine of Sodom and of the fields of Gomorrah. Their grapes are grapes of gall. Their clusters are bitter. Their wine is the poison of dragons and the cruel venom of asps. Is not this laid up in store with me and sealed up among my treasures? To me belongeth vengeance and recompense. Their foot shall slide in due time. For the day of their calamity is at hand, and the things that shall come upon them make haste. The Lord shall judge his people and repent himself for his servants. His servants. Okay? For those who are his. When he seeth that their power is gone, and there is none shut up or left, and he will say, where are their gods? Their lowercase r, rock in whom they trusted. Yeah, all these guys telling you how to be happy through worldly means. You know, the Joseph Princes and all these guys rubbing in your face their worldliness and how they're so blessed in the world. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Where are their gods? Their rock in whom they trusted. Their God is going to the lake of fire just like they are. Okay? which did eat the fat of their sacrifices and drank the wine of their drink offerings, let them rise up and help you and be your protection. Yeah. Let the man who you worship as God rise up and protect you. See now that I, even I am he, and there is no God with me. I kill I make alive, I wound, and I heal. Neither is there any that can deliver out of my hand. Like I've talked to you before on many occasions, nothing happens outside of God's knowledge, say so, or doing. Okay? Nobody, you're not going to, you're not going to pull the wool over God's eyes. You're not going to pull a fast one on them. Okay? Okay? I've talked to you about this plenty of times before. Okay? God is in control. Okay. He won't kill, like, you know, he won't send us, he, he himself won't send an evil spirit, but he will allow an evil spirit to do. And remember, he is a great king. So the king says it's okay, the king is doing it, but yet he himself isn't doing it. Okay, you understand? You understand? Do you understand? Okay, yes? Okay, okay. For if I lift up my, uh, what, what, uh, 38, Okay. Yeah, we. I said to 38, but let's read uh, verse 40 and 41. For I lift up my hand to heaven and say, I live forever. If I wet my glittering sword, sharpen it, and my hand take hold on judgment, I will render vengeance to mine enemies and will reward them that hate me. Now, King Nebuchadnezzar, God referred to him as his servant. And you read Daniel chapter 4, King Nebuchadnezzar is in heaven. I totally believe that. Absolutely. King Nebuchadnezzar is in heaven. Why? Because he knew who God was and God saved him. I believe that totally. Okay. But see, just kind of like Ahab who humbled himself and didn't see the evil that would come on his kingdom... But his kids saw it, but he himself didn't see the evil, even though Ahab himself is in hell, okay? See, God is merciful like that, okay? King Nebuchadnezzar, uh, the scriptures refer unto King Nebuchadnezzar as God's servant, okay? And in Daniel chapter 4, we see that Nebuchadnezzar, I believe, was a saved man and is in heaven, okay? What happened after that? Okay, look at King Manasseh. King Manasseh was a wicked king. Ended up getting saved, as it were, and is in heaven right now. But see, even when the Lord saved him and he was right with God, because of all the years of his evil that he did, that effect on the people could not be undone, even though he himself was made right in the eyes of the Lord and is in heaven, okay? And he tried his best, he did. But see, what he did to the people, his evil, 
could not be undone, even though he himself is in heaven with the Lord right now, okay? Thus, King Nebuchadnezzar, God's servant, he himself is in heaven, but the evil that his kingdom endured after him, okay? Babylon is doomed to fall. I mean, you read Revelation chapter 17, okay? <laughs> okay? Mystery Babylon the Great. And remember, the and Babylon and Nebuchadnezzar, that's the religion of Babylon, which is Roman Catholicism today, okay? Read uh, uh, Hislop's book. Oh, wait a minute, you can't. Uh, Hislop doesn't know what he's talking about on some things, apparently. <laughs> but read uh, Alexander Hislop's book about the uh, two Babylons, okay? Okay? But... What happened after King Nebuchadnezzar? You read the book of Daniel. It tells you so, okay? And uh, also now go to Deuteronomy chapter 7. Deuteronomy chapter 7. We want verses 9 and 10. Know therefore that the Lord thy God, he is God, the faithful God, which keepeth covenant and mercy with them that love him and keep his commandments to a thousand generations. And repayeth them that hate him to their face to destroy them. He will not be slack to him that hateth him. He will repay him to his face. King Nebuchadnezzar himself did not hate the Lord. King Nebuchadnezzar himself, Daniel chapter 4, he is in heaven. His people hated the Lord. They worshiped the phallus. Okay? The, the obelisk. You know, like we have in Washington, set up by the Jesuits. Okay? They worshiped the phallus of Horus or whatever it is. Okay? Babylon as a nation, as a people, hated the Lord. Not every single one of them. Okay? But as a people, they hated the Lord. And you hate the Lord, dear friend, you hate the Lord, the Lord hates you. God loved and gave. His salvation is there for you to have, but you have to go on his terms. There are so many people out there who say that I love Jesus. Yeah, what Jesus are you talking about? There are so many people out there who say they love God, but they actually hate him. They they lie to him on the, with their mouth, but in their heart, but in their heart, they hate him. Even today in this dispensation, if you hate God, God hates you. You're an enemy of God, God's an enemy of you. God's love is at the cross. You got to go there on his terms, not your own. Okay? And repayeth them that hate me him to their face. What do you think the time to take his trouble is about? Jeremiah chapter 50. Like I said, that, and we'll talk more about that in the other video uh, about Psalm 137. Um, yeah, that can throw a lot of people. But you got to remember, God is just, God is righteous, God is holy, separate, other than. Okay, his thoughts are not our thoughts, his ways are not our ways. Okay, we already looked at that. Okay, yeah, that can throw a lot of people. He repays those who hate him. The Babylonians hated God. Okay? King Nebuchadnezzar, like I said, he is saved. Excuse me. King Nebuchadnezzar, he is saved. He is in heaven. Yes. But his kingdom after him. His people. Individually today, different story. Even back then, individually. But as a nation, as a grand populace, they hated God. Jeremiah chapter 50, verses 4 and verse 16. We have to address this because someone will come to uh, Psalm 137, verses 8 and 9. Happy shall he be who takes a kid and dashes it against the rocks? He's a just God. He repays 
those who hate him. What does a baby do? These people will train their children up, train up a child in the way he will go, and when he is old, he will not depart from it. Okay? That's why God had to kill man, woman, and child. Why? Because the child will come up in the way of the heathen that the God that our Lord hates and become even more of a greater enemy. Okay? God is just in all what he does. You can Ezekiel, what is it, 18 me? All day. I know. He would rather people repent and get saved. But not everybody's going to. There are people out there who hate God and who God hates. Brother Alexander Hartley does a wonderful video on that. Does a couple on them, okay? Check out his stuff, all right? But Jeremiah chapter 40, 50, we want verses 4 on to verse 16. Talking about Babylon after King Nebuchadnezzar has gone out of the way. Isn't that interesting? In those days and in that time, said the Lord, the children of Israel shall come, they and the children of Judah together, going and weeping. They shall go and seek the Lord their God. They shall ask the way to Zion with their faces thitherward, saying, Come, and let us join ourselves to the Lord in a perpetual covenant that shall not be forgotten. My people hath been lost sheep. Their shepherds have caused them to go astray. They have turned them away on the mountains. They have gone from mountain to hill. They have forgotten their resting place. All that found them have devoured them. And their adversary said, We offend not, because they have sinned against the Lord. The habitation of justice, even the Lord, the hope of their fathers. Remove out of the midst of Babylon and go forth out of the land of the Chaldeans. And be as the he goats before the flocks. Come out from amongst her, my people, and be ye separate, saith the Lord. Okay. Modern Babylon, with, uh, what is it, Iraq? But the religion of mo modern Babylon, of the religion of Babylon, is Roman Catholicism. That's all it is, okay? For lo, I will raise, and I will rise, and cause to come up against Babylon an assembly of great nations from the north country, Persia and stuff like that. And they shall set themselves in array against her from thence shall... From thence she shall be taken, their arrows shall be as a mighty expert man, none shall return in vain. And Chaldea shall be a spoil, all that spoil her shall be satisfied, saith the Lord. Because, now this is them, because ye were glad, because ye rejoiced, O ye destroyers of mine heritage, because ye are grown fat as the heifer at grass, and bellow as bulls. See, King Nebuchadnezzar was allowed to do what he was allowed by God. And then there was a time uh, in Daniel chapter 4, he was on the kingdom, on the top of his palace. He's like, have not I done this all by my own power and for my own kingdom? And then the Lord's like, uh, hey, buddy, I let you do that. Nebuchadnezzar came to his senses. King Nebuchadnezzar is in heaven, Okay. Verse 12, your mother shall be sore confounded. She that bear you shall be ashamed. Behold, the hindermost of the nations shall be a wilderness, a dry land and a desert. Because of the wrath of the Lord, it shall not be inhabited, but it shall be wholly desolate. Everyone that goeth by Babylon shall be astonished and hiss at her plagues. Put yourselves in array. What are we reading to? I, I, I beg your pardon. Put yourselves in array ah, against Babylon round, round about. All ye that bend the bow, shoot at her, spare no arrows, for she has sinned against the Lord. Shout against her round about. She hath given her hand, she hath given her hand. Her foundations are fallen. Her walls are thrown down, for it is the vengeance of the Lord. Take vengeance upon her, as she hath done, so do unto her. Cut off the sore from Babylon, and him that handleth the sickle in the time of harvest. For fear of the oppressing sword, they shall turn every one to his people, and they shall flee every one to his own land. So you see, dear friend, 
God is a God of judgment. God is a God of recompense with a C and of an S, okay? One's a noun, one's a verb. But see, the people of Babylon in a whole hated the Lord. And they were proud against his people. And in Deuteronomy, it talks about, lest the, I fear lest the enemy boast himself. He, God doesn't fear anybody. But what he was talking about is that these people will start to think that, well, I've done this. It's my doing. And the Lord hasn't allowed me. See. So someone will be happy in serving as doing justice and judgment of the Lord. We are to be happy in God's judgment. We are to be happy in God's justice. We are to be happy in how our Lord serves those who hate Him. Okay? Yes. We are to praise the Lord for His judgment. Yeah. Okay? Happy in His judgment. Which is what Psalm 137 is talking about. No, you know, I'm not happy that a little kid is going to get taken a dash to get. No, but in the fact that it's God's judgment for a nation that has chosen to hate him and forever will be his enemy. Amen. Now, let's look here um, at Psalm 144. Psalm 144. Pick your pardon, brethren. All right, Psalm 144. We want verses 4 on the verse 15 in Psalm, 40, uh, Psalm 144, okay? Psalm 144, or let's, or is that a 9? Uh, let's start at 4. <laughs> Look at how it begins. Man is like to vanity. His days are as a shadow that passeth away. Bow thy heavens, O Lord, and come down. Touch the mountains, and they shall smoke. Cast forth lightning, and scatter them. Shoot out thine arrows, and destroy them. Send thine hand from above. Rid me, and deliver me out of great waters. From the hand of strange children. Whose mouth speaketh vanity, and their right hand is a right hand of falsehood. I will sing a new song unto thee, O God, upon a psaltery and an instrument of ten strings. Will I sing praises unto thee? It is he that giveth salvation unto kings, who delivereth David his servant from the hurtful sword. Rid me, and deliver me from the hand of strange children whose mouth speaketh vanity, and their right hand is a right hand of falsehood, that our sons may be as plants grown up in their youth, that our daughters may be as cornerstones polished after the similitude of a palace, that our garners may be full. Our garners may be full. His provision, okay? That our garners may be full, affording all manner of store, that our sheep may bring forth thousands and ten thousands in our streets. You're on the Lord's side. You love the Lord and the Lord loves you. Okay? Joy, true joy, truly happy. True joy is in the Lord Jesus Christ. And truly happy will you be when you joy in the Lord who will provide for your need and give you what you uh, don't need, a luxury. But see, again, you lose sight of the one who is doing the blessing and take hold on just the blessing itself going to have problems, okay? That our oxen may be strong to labor, that there be no breaking in nor going out, that there be no complaining in our streets. Happy is that people that is in such a case, yea, happy is that people whose God is the Lord. And the ones who are talking to you about happiness today and being happy today, whose God, are, who's, who's God are they talking about? Are they talking to you about the God of the scriptures? No. No. 
they're talking to you about the little G God of this world who says, if you fall down and worship me, all shall be thine. Okay? Now, we are going to have to skip a little here because, uh, like I said, uh, I only got three hours here. and um, But uh, so far, you're getting the point, I, I perceive. You're getting the point. Happy. To be truly happy. Okay? What are we to be happy in? And what God gives us? Yes. Yes. But see, if you're focusing on just what God gives and not who God is... Psalm 146. Praise ye the Lord. Praise the Lord, all my soul. While I live, will I praise the Lord. I will sing praises unto my God while I have any being. Put not your trust in princes, nor in the Son of Man in whom is no help. Yeah, let the man you worship save you in the day of your calamity. Yeah. His breath goeth forth. He returneth to his earth. In that very day, his thoughts perish. Happy is he that hath the God of Jacob for his help, whose hope is in the Lord his God. My hope is in the Lord my God. But see, so many people and what's being pressed with you right now with the financial stuff that's going to happen with all the stuff that's going on hope in the blessing itself not the one who is giving you the blessing they get perverted okay <laughs> what good is the blessing without the one who's providing it what good is, I hate to use this, but it's a good example. What good is a sword despite the hand that wields it? Hmm? Same, okay. What good is a gun, even though a gun could kill many people, uh, in the hand of someone who doesn't know how to use it? Happy is he that hath the God of Jacob for his help whose hope is in the Lord his God. Happy. Happy. Because our Lord Jesus Christ is your God. Is your Savior. Happy that he gave you himself. His salvation. His seal. Happy and joyful. Joyful that he is perfect. And that when you go out of here, no matter how you mess up, of the church of the living God, to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. Which made heaven and, and earth, the sea and all that therein is, which keepeth truth forever, which executeth judgment for the oppressed, which giveth food to the hungry, the Lord loseth the prisoners, the Lord openeth the eye. Okay. Now, look at verse, from verse 7 to verse 10, okay? Look at this. The Lord loseth the prisoners. The Lord openeth the eyes of the blind. The Lord raiseth them that are bowed down. The Lord loveth the righteous. The Lord preserveth the strangers. He relieveth the fatherless and the widow. But the way of the wicked he turneth upside down. The Lord shall reign forever, even thy God, O Zion, unto all generations. Praise ye the Lord. Praise ye the Lord. How many of you are merely happy because you have stuff? You got a nest egg. Huh? How many are you happy for that? Reason alone. Hmm? And what God are you thanking for that? I wonder. So, happy, to be happy in accordance with Scripture comes from the Lord provi providing, doing for you, taking care of you. Okay? But, now, I unfortunately... 
Unfortunately, we do have to skip a little. Well, well maybe not. Maybe not. Uh, maybe not. Let's go to the Proverbs. Proverbs chapter 3. Proverbs chapter 3. Because we, uh, we are going to look in the uh, New Testament. Okay. Proverbs chapter 3. We want verses 13 on to verse 18. Okay. Proverbs 3, verses 13 on to verse 18. Happy is the man that findeth wisdom, fear of the Lord, and the man that getteth understanding, departing from evil. For the merchandise of it is better than the merchandise of silver, and the gain thereof than fine gold. Yes, you have the fear of the Lord and departing of evil. That is better than anything that the world can give you. Okay? Unless... You are happy in the fear of the Lord and in understanding, departing from evil. The joy that you think you're going to have from silver and fine gold is going to be a fleeting thing. Well, joy is eternal. Happiness is only momentarily. Okay? She is more precious than rubies. And all the things thou canst desire are not to be compared unto her. Length of days is in her right hand, and in her left hand, riches and honor. Look at that, okay? Length of days is in her right hand. Right hand. The sheep are on the right hand. The goats are on the left, okay? Right hand, okay? Length of days, eternal. Sheep, okay? And in her left hand, riches and honor. Riches and honor, which come from what? Which come from what? Length of days. Okay? Okay? So riches and honor, riches and honor are something that come from worldly things. Right? Not always. I mean, we'll have riches and honor in heaven, of course. But, okay, if you have the fear of the Lord, he's going to provide for you. He's going to take care of you. You will have length of days. Okay? Fear the Lord and riches and honor. His provision. Okay? Okay? And this provision that he gives us today, right now, does come from, yes, worldly things. It's not bad to have worldly things as a benefit. A house and stuff like that. Internet for education and stuff like that. Right? A vehicle to get around. They are not bad. Okay? They are not a necessity. They are a luxury. I don't care what you excuse, what you want to make an excuse on, okay? Those are a luxury, not a necessity, okay? Those he gives us, and those things are of the world. Why? Because we are his own, okay? Satan can give you all this stuff too. But length of days, only as long as your life. Then you'll go to hell, where he's going eventually, okay? Verse 17, her ways are ways of pleasantness, and all her paths are peace. She is a tree of life to them that lay hold upon her. And happy is every one that retaineth her. And of course, wisdom and uh, understanding are being compared unto a beautiful woman, which is to be far, uh, far better value than that of rubies and stuff like that. And a woman who feareth the Lord, she shall be praised. Yeah, you come across a true, true sister in the Lord, a true woman. And I know a few. They are beyond beyond rubies. Their price, what they are in Christ Jesus, is better to be compared than silver and fine gold. Mm. Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay? All right. Now we're going to skip some, unfortunately. Unfortunately. But we are going to go now to John. John chapter 13. Now, we're going to see kind of a shift here in what it is to be happy. Happy is a byproduct of joy. And we in this dispensation, we have the joy of the Lord, which is our strength. That's in Nehemiah. Okay. We are sealed unto the day of redemption. We have God living within us. Our joy is, like I told you, we die, we be present with the Lord. And because we have the joy of the Lord within us, he will give us these things to make us happy. Okay? But we're going to see another aspect of happy. Okay, so far, what have we seen of being happy? 
Happy is what? Uh, uh, being provided for by the Lord in his provision, in his blessing, and also doing what he says, okay? Those things will lead to you being happy according to scripture. Do what he says, okay? And you can have be happy in his provision and his blessing, okay? Because you seek him first and love him and follow him. Do what he says, okay? But now go to John. John chapter 13. John chapter 13. Not Romans. John chapter 13. We want verses 13 on to verse 18 in John chapter 13. This is after our Lord done washed the stinking, nasty, rotten, stinking feet of fishermen. God the Father, God manifest in the flesh. Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. Okay, we'll get off on that. Okay, this is after he washed their feet. Ye call me, verses 13 on to verse 17. Is that what I have written down there? Yes, I do. Ye call me Master and Lord, and ye say, well, for so I... I am. Got that circle? If I then your Lord and if I then your Lord and Master have washed your feet, ye also ought to wash one another's feet. For I have given you an example that ye should do as I have done to you. The humiliation of God the Father being manifest in flesh, humbling himself to reside in flesh. Wow. See, our thoughts are not his thoughts. Our ways are not his ways. We've, what do we know beside this? We will know as he knows, not as he knows, but we will know uh, some degree when we get to be with him but I, he was perfect, sinless, who created everything, confines himself to a skin suit. Wow. Wow. Verse 16. Verily, verily, I say unto you, the servant is not greater than his Lord. And how many of you need to remember that? Hi. Neither he that is sent greater than he that sent him. If ye know these things, happy are ye, happy are ye, get your little pen, are ye, if ye do them, happy are ye, if ye do them. Now this is before the death, burial, and resurrection, but he was setting an example to serve one another as the church of the living God, to wash each other's feet, to take care of ourselves, our, our own, meaning ourselves, our own people, our own of the church of the living God, okay? Yes, he gave us an example, okay? If you know these things, okay, you know them, know what to do, happy are ye if ye do them. You could be saved, born again, converted, new creature in Christ Jesus of the church of the living God, going to heaven when you die, but because you have no regard to live your life according to scripture, your life is a wreck, you are miserable, you are lonely, you're sad, you're angry, you're bitter, you're depressed, you look at man for an example, okay? Go to heaven when you die. But see, if you know these things, happy are ye if ye do them, okay? Happy are ye if ye do them. It's not talking about joy. Happy you are. Because, like I said, you could be a saved man, saved woman, going to heaven when you die. But your life down here is miserable. You're a wreck. Your testimony is shot. Why? 
<laughs> if I then your Lord and Master have washed your feet, ye also ought to wash one another's feet. Ye, why call me ye Lord, Lord, and do not what I say? This has nothing to do with your salvation. This has to do with his honor. Meaning, you're saved of the church of the living God. Okay? Going to heaven when you die? How are you honoring our Lord by your life? Oh, Brad, you're hitting... Dude, is there something wrong with you? <laughs> you know how strapped a lot of people are right now? Hmm? Are you aware of what the financial catastrophe that is going to come on so many of us? You need to know where your joy is at. Never mind your happiness. Happiness dances and frets stuff upon the stage and then is heard of no more. Okay? Happiness is temporary, needing to be refilled. Joy is eternal. And if your joy is in your happiness, you have the wrong thing. Okay? I am going to dare to say to, unto you that there are those out there especially these Christians of today, have made an idol out of happiness. Okay? Now, as far as that goes, John chapter 13, happy are ye if ye do them? Okay? Now, as far as that goes, that, uh, if I'm uh, remembering right, that is the last appearance of the word happy in the, New, in the Old Testament. This is in the books of the New Testament, but this is before the death, burial, and res resurrection, which was still under the law, still doctrinally the Old Testament. Now, in the New Testament, Acts 26. Now, what did he say? If ye know these things, happy are ye if ye do them. See, God is not forcing you to walk in his ways, Okay? If you don't walk in his ways, oh boy, our life is going to be miserable. But we're not going to see. See, because it is finished. It is finished. We take joy in what God has done. Okay? He has saved us. All right? But now, Acts 26, verses 1 on to verse 3. Okay? Acts 26, verses 1 on to verse 3. King Agrippa, Paul before King Agrippa, okay? Being an example, being a witness, okay? Then Agrippa said unto Paul, Thou art permitted to speak for thyself. Then Paul stretched forth the hand and answered for himself, I think myself happy, King Agrippa, because I shall answer for myself this day before thee, touching all the things whereof I am accused of the Jews. Why was Paul happy? Because he was in bonds? No, because he was put before a king, and before a king he was able to give testimony of our Lord Jesus Christ. And you read about this, you, you, he gives his testimony unto King Agrippa. Okay? So, he was happy being in the presence of a king while bound in bonds, but yet he was happy being of the Lord, sealed, being a witness unto a lost king. So, happy being in service of the Lord. Aha. Uh -huh. So, provision, blessing, okay? Provision and blessing, his gifts, his service. Let's read verse 2 again. I think myself happy, King Agrippa, because I shall answer for myself this day before thee, touching all things whereof I am accused of the Jews, especially because I know thee to be expert in all customs and questions which are among the Jews. Wherefore I, wherefore I beseech thee to hear me patiently. See, so King Agrippa had a little something to know about what Paul was going to talk about. But see, in the presence of a king, he was able to give testimony of how the Lord saved him. That made him happy. See, 
talking about how the Lord saved you and in front of others makes can make you happy. But what often happens is people will boast about themselves of how great they are. Rather, and they'll be like, well, I'm great because of the Lord. Instead of doing it appropriately, the Lord is great because what he did for me, a useless, worthless sinner. I, I know many people who will spend two hours telling you how great they are through the Lord instead of telling you how great the Lord is for saving a worthless person like myself. You know that better than I, don't you? You've run into them. Doesn't it make you sick? I, I, tell me how the Lord say. Tell me what the Lord has done for you today. Tell me how the Lord has blessed you today. I don't care about the blessings. I want to hear how our Lord has had compassion and mercy upon you. That's what I want to hear about. The blessings that are here today, gone tomorrow. Okay? These worldly things. His blessing, his mercy of forgiveness, salvation, grace. The things that you can be happy about. How he has blessed you. Tell me how the Lord has blessed you. Tell me about the Lord. Tell me about the Lord. Okay? Now go to Romans chapter 14. Here's another appearance of the word happy. Within, uh, within the Pauline epistles, okay? Within the Pauline epistles, happy only appears one time in the Pauline epistles. But joy, I, 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 for, I, I forget uh, how many times um, joy appears in the Pauline. Oh, yeah, quite a few times. Okay, quite a few times joy appears in the Pauline epistles. But happy only appears once in the Pauline epistles. And within... Romans chapter 14, that's another one where both happy and joy are in the same chapter, but they're not side by side. Okay? Romans chapter 14, verses 19 on to the close of the chapter. Okay? Like I said, we will deal with joy in another video. Romans 14. Now this is not judging people on days when they decide to worship the Lord or what they want to eat. For example... You want to spend a day like Tuesday to worship the Lord. It's like that. That's the day that I just turn everything off and it's just me and the Lord. Tuesday. Fine. Great. Good for you. Okay. You want to do it on Tuesday? That's great. Hey, you want to do it on the actual Sabbath? Hey, that's great. Okay. You want to do it on Sunday or Friday on the third afternoon after the bells ring? Fine. Go ahead. I don't care. I'm not going to judge you on that. Okay. And about your diet. Okay. I'm not going to judge you on what you eat. Okay? And this is not excusing trying to make something that is pagan okay for the church of the living God. That has nothing to do with that. Okay? And that will be spoken on in the appropriate time. When they bring it up again at the appropriate time. Now is not the time. Okay, a couple of months ago that was. Now it's not the time. Let them bop, 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 all they want. Okay, that will be dealt with much later at the at the appropriate time. But that's not talking about making it okay for you of the Church of the Living God to do something that is pagan. Okay, not talking about that. But if you want to worship the Lord and want to take a day like Monday and make that your day to worship the Lord, go ahead. Go for it. You want it on Thursday? Go ahead. The actual Sabbath? Go ahead. Okay? I'm not going to judge you about that. Not at all. You want to stay kosher? Fine. Go ahead. You don't have to. It's not uh, required for your salvation. You want to do that? Fine. You want to eat pork? Fine. You want to be a vegetarian? Fine. Go ahead. Go ahead. Okay? I'm not going to judge you on that. But see, when you got people who do, it's like, well, you ought to, you ought to do that on the Sabbath. Or you got to worship the Lord on Sunday. The Lord's Day. Well, I want to do it on Wednesday. Oh, you're not saved then. No. No. Romans chapter 14, verses 19 on to verse 23. 
Let us therefore follow after the things which make for peace, and things wherein, wherein wherewith one may edify another. Edify. Edify, you know, build up, okay? For me destroy not the work of God. All things indeed are pure, but it is evil for that man who eateth with offense. A, a Jew, a Hebrew of the Church of the Living God, newly converted, struggling with the kosher thing, doesn't quite yet grasp that it's okay, you can go ahead and eat pork, doesn't cost you your salvation or anything like that today. You as the Church of the Living God, you're going to go in front of him and eat a pulled pork uh, sandwich with egg on it and bacon strips. And very good. Mm, very good. I love that. But anyway, you're going to do that? No. 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 It is good neither to eat flesh, nor to drink wine, nor anything whereby thy brother stumbleth, or is offended, or is made weak. And in context, that's what that's talking about. Okay? A converted Hebrew who is trained that it's only the Sabbath. You you can't even walk on the Sabbath. Uh, can't walk a certain distance. You can't drive. You can't uh, use a microwave. You can't use a certain function of your oven. I mean, they get really weird about it. I mean, they really not scriptural at all. They they focus on well, what's work, okay? If you walk a certain, I've heard of some Orthodox Jews even talking about how many steps a person can take on the Sabbath. Okay. Okay. So a Hebrew converted of the church of the living God. Okay. And struggling with like the Sabbath and whatnot. It's like, hey, it's like a Tuesday night. You say, hey, come on over. Let's worship the Lord. Sing some hymns. Go through some scripture. Hey, I got, we, my wife makes this great chicken salad for you. Come on over, man. Come on. Well, it's it's Tuesday. Hey, I know about the Sabbath. It's, it's, uh, well, I don't feel right about doing it yet. So, okay, fine then, dude. It's okay. It's okay. Okay? You don't rub it in. You don't rub it in. Okay? I spare you. I spare you. Hast thou faith? Have it to thyself before God. Happy is he that condemneth not himself in that thing which he alloweth. What does that mean? Being a jerk about it. Rubbing it, rubbing, rubbing it in to people's faces. Okay? Again, perfect example. A converted Hebrew coming from the strictness of orthodoxy, okay? With the two separate refrigerators, one for kosher and one for non-kosher and stuff like that, or the different things like that. Taking big buckets of salt water and having the rabbi uh, giving, uh, I forget what the name of the prayer is, where they, they dump the water, the salt water stuff all over the uh, table. Okay, our Lord talks about that, about washing the pots and stuff when they come from the markets. Okay, they do that today. Okay, but see, when they come to the Lord, okay, the veil of the Old Testament is taken away. Okay, and there is that freedom, that liberty to do these things today, okay? But see, if you are going to be offensive about it and offend people with this, then hast thou faith, have it to thyself before God. Happy is he that condemneth not himself in that thing which he alloweth. alloweth. And he that doubteth is damned if he eat, because he eateth not of faith. For whatsoever not, so whatsoever is not of faith is sin. And you got to remember, go to 1 Timothy chapter 4. 1 Timothy chapter 4. 1 Timothy chapter 4, verses 1 on to verse 5. Now the Spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter time some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits, and doctrines of Catholics. Oh, excuse me, of devils. Speaking lies and hypocrisy, having their conscience seared with a hot iron. Not killed. You can't kill your conscience. You can sear it with the hot iron, okay? 
forbidding to marry. Not just Catholics. Other things uh, forbid to marry, okay? And commanding to abstain from meats. The vegan veganism thing. I was a vegan for a little while, unfortunately. It was really thin back then. But, uh, you know, veganism, uh, stuff like that. Um, uh, is uh, Muslims, Buddhists, and stuff like that, they command to abstain from certain meats too. Not just Catholics, okay? Forbidding to marry and to command and command to abstain from meats, which God hath created to re be received with thanksgiving of them which believe and know the truth. For every creature of God is good and nothing to be refused if it be received with thanksgiving, for it is sanctified by the word of God and prayer. Okay? Okay. So, and if you as the church of the living God go about to a novice and a, or a babe or something, because remember, how does Romans chapter 14 verse 1 begin, dear friend? Okay? What is it talking about? Come on, Romans chapter 14, verse 1. Him that is weak in the faith receive ye, yet uh, receive ye, but not to doubtful disputations. So it's talking about weak people in the faith, new converts, babes, okay? And you babes got to be careful with people which we have just read about in 1 Timothy chapter 4, okay? Got to be careful with that, Okay? They will have you happy in the ways of men, in the precepts of men. My fear is taught by the precepts of men, okay? And, and also now go to 2 Timothy chapter 4, verses 3 and 4. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own lusts. Ooh, could go off on that one, couldn't I? But I'm not going to. At the appropriate time, I will. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own lusts shall they heap to themselves teachers having itching ears, and they shall turn away their ears from the truth and shall be turned unto fables. Okay? Now, Go to 1 Peter. 1 Peter, chapter 3. Now, Paul, in front of Agrippa, was happy because he was giving you the testimony. You're ha happy, are you, if you don't condemn yourself in that thing that you allow? Meaning that you're taking, you're eating a pulled pork sandwich in front of a newly converted. Jew, who's struggling with that stuff. Have a little grace. It's like, okay, I won't have my pork. Like I said, my wife makes a great chicken salad, you know. You, you know who you're talking about, you know. You know where we are. Come on, <laughs> okay. My wife makes a great chicken salad. We won't have pork, I promise you, okay. <laughs> so, but King Agrippa, Paul in front of King Agrippa, happy was he to give his testimony. If ye know these things, happy are ye if ye do them. Live by an example. Live by the example given. Okay? First Peter chapter 3. Not 2, brother. Not 2 Peter. What are you doing? First Peter chapter 3. We want verses 12 on to verse 16. And this is another one. Check this out. For the eyes of the Lord are over the righteous, and his ears are open unto their prayers. But the face of the Lord is against them that do evil. And who is he that will harm you if ye be followers of that which is good? But if ye suffer for righteousness' sake, happy are ye, and be not afraid of their terror, neither be ye troubled. Why? Because their rock is not ours, our rock, and they being witnesses of themselves. Okay? So if you are, you know, for, the, for all those who will live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution, okay? They shall, amen, okay? So happy are ye if you suffer for 
whose righteousness sake? Our Lord's and what's uh, written in scripture, okay? But, and if ye suffer for our righteousness sake, happy are ye, and be not afraid of their terror, neither be troubled. But sanctify the Lord God in your hearts, and be ready always to give an answer to every man that asketh you every question under the sun, and you gotta go to every books and be in a... And be ready to give an answer to every man that asketh you a reason of the hope that is in you with meekness and fear. Like Paul before Agrippa, I consider myself happy to testify, to give my testimony of how the Lord saved a worthless sinner who is chief. Not, oh, let me tell you, of, oh, I got this car, I got this house, I'm rolling all on easy street, and I can put my feet up and just kick back. Praise the Lord, I'm doing really, no, 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 you go flush that stuff down the toilet with your head in it, okay? No. I don't know how great God is. I was a sodomite, a liar, a thief, a cheat, an adulterer. Okay? Had an affair with a married woman. Okay? <laughs> Long hair. Oh, let me tell you, the mercy that the Lord Jesus Christ God my Father had on me. Okay? Tell me how the Lord has blessed you. Tell me how the Lord has blessed you. Now with this, tell me about the Lord. Tell me about the Lord. Okay? Tell me about the Lord. Verse 16. Having a good conscience that whereas they speak evil of you as evildoers, they may be ashamed that falsely, falsely accuse your good conversation in Christ. <laughs> so, happy if you're suffering for his righteousness sake. And, and, 1 Peter chapter 4, verses 12, on to verse 14. Beloved, think it not strange concerning the fiery trial which is to try you, as though, as though some strange thing happened unto you. But rejoice inasmuch as ye are partakers of Christ's suffering, that when his glory shall be revealed, ye may be glad also with exceeding Joy. Here's another one where happy and joy are in the same chapter. Okay? Okay? Joy. What is our joy? Christ Jesus within us. That to be absent with the body, to be present with the Lord. Our joy is Christ Jesus. Our liberty is Christ Jesus. Okay? Jesus Christ. He is our joy. And if you're not saved, you don't have that. You have happy, happy. Things of the world. Why are you always got to fill it up? Hmm? Show me a man living in Bedlam and squalor who's of the church of the living God and I'll show you someone who has joy unspeakable and far more than someone who is happy and has lots of stuff. Okay? If ye be reproached for the name of Christ, happy are ye. Why? For the lowercase as spirit of glory and of God resteth upon you. On their part he is evil spoken of, but on your part he is glorified. Amen. Praise the Lord. So happy that you are suffering for his righteousness sake. Why? Because the Lord lives within you. That's your joy, see? Are you getting it? Okay, are you getting this? Okay, and called by another name. That'll be in the description box for you, okay? Now, go to Mark chapter 13. Mark chapter 13. Mark chapter 13. Come on, Mark chapter 13. Okay, verses 9 on to verse 13. 
Now, a dispensational difference is right that we're going to look at because we don't have to endure to the end uh, to be saved to anything, okay? But, Mark chapter 13, verses 9 on to verse 13. But take heed to yourselves, for they shall deliver you up to councils, and in the synagogues ye shall be beaten, and ye shall be brought before rulers and kings for my sake, for a testimony against them. Is that not what happened to uh, King uh, with Paul before King Agrippa? That's what Peter was referring to during the time of Jacob's trouble. Okay, people who are going to be working for that man of uh, sin, the son of perdition, those who are during the time of Jacob's trouble, trouble, um, Jacob's trouble, time of Jacob's trouble, saints. Okay, saints during that time, going to be brought before magistrates and stuff for a testimony against them. Okay. During that time period where it's faith and works, where if you take the mark of the beast, you're done for, okay? But instruct to, uh, to instruct us here. And the gospel must first be published among all nations. But when they shall lead you and deliver you up, take no thought beforehand what ye shall speak, neither do ye premeditate. But whatsoever shall be given you in that hour, that speak ye. For it is not ye that speak, but the Holy Ghost. Yes, the Holy Ghost will be able and will indwell you uh, during the time of Jacob's trouble, those of you who get left behind. But it is not he, the Holy Ghost, it is not a permanent residence in you. Okay? Why? It can go when you take the mark of the beast. The only ones who are sealed during the time of Jacob's trouble are the 144,000 Jews. Okay? They're the only ones who are sealed. During the time of Jacob's trouble. During the time of Jacob's trouble. Yes, the Holy Ghost can indwell you. Yes. Okay. Yes, he can. Yes, he most certainly can. Amen. Hallelujah. But you take the mark of the beast, you're, you're going to hell. Okay. Eternal security. The seal is not there except for the 144,000 Jews. Okay. Let's continue to verse 13. Now the brother shall betray the brother to death. And the father, the son, and the children shall rise up against their parents and shall cause them to be put to death. During the time of Jacob's trouble? Absolutely. And ye shall be hated of all men for my name's sake, appliable today. For the time of Jacob's trouble, this is referring to right here. But he that shall endure unto the end, the same shall be saved. You and I, we don't have to endure to the end to be saved. Okay? That's for the time of Jacob's trouble. And boy, aren't they going to be happy once they make it past uh, through the time of Jacob's trouble? Uh, okay. Uh, James chapter 5. James chapter 5. One verse. Verse 11. Okay. And James is written for the Jews during the time of Jacob's trouble. Okay. James chapter 5 verse 11. Uh, let's read verse 10, okay, and 11. Take, my brethren, the prophets who have spoken in the name of the Lord for an example of suffering, affliction, and of patience. Behold, we count them happy which endure. Ye have heard of the patience of Job, and have seen the end of the Lord, that the Lord is very pitiful and of a tender mercy. Yes, when the Jew finally comes to his senses, during the time of Jacob's trouble, they're going to be very happy that they have endured to the end. Oh, absolutely. Why? Because they're going to be entering the joy of the Lord. Okay? Okay. And uh, go to Mark chapter 16 now. Go back to Mark. Mark chapter 16. Mark chapter 16. Yeah, and yeah, we're just going to mention this. And he said unto them, Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every preach, uh, every creature. And that was said after the death, burial, and resurrection. So for we today to be happy in the Lord, number one, we can be happy with the fruit of the womb, his provision for our luxuries, his blessings of mercies and grace upon us. Yes, we can be happy in him. Yes, that he provides for our needs. Okay, but see, that is predator that proceeds from what? Having the joy that we are his and that we are sealed, that to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. Okay, and today for us, we are happy. 
when we get to preach the gospel, when we are put before people to be witnesses unto him. Okay? That, that's a good source of happy. That's a real good source of happy. Not boasting yourself. Boasting the Lord. There's a big difference. And to be quite frank with you, and my name is Brad, to be quite frank with you, it makes me vomitously ill to see these people who boast themselves. Say, praise God. Yeah, yeah, shut up. Shut up. You tell me how the Lord has blessed you. Tell me about the Lord and his mercy. Don't tell me about how you've got to fancy this, how you got all this, all that. No, 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 no. no. Go to Philippians chapter 4. Philippians chapter 4. Oh, I actually got to watch the time. Philippians chapter 4. We're almost done. I did cut out a little, unfortunately, but uh, the next one will probably be a two-part video. Probably. And that will be coming, Lord willing, Monday and or Tuesday. But, but never mind. Philippians chapter 4, verses 10 to verse 13. We are happy when the Lord uses us for his glory as a witness as to what he has done unto us. Okay? Not that we are blessed with worldly stuff. Okay? I have more respect for someone who has nothing but yet tells me of the joy of the Lord and how the Lord saved him than someone who has everything and is going to spend an hour of time telling me about, oh, how he got the latest this, this, and that. Okay? Those are Luciferians masquerading as the church of the living God. But see, they call themselves Christians. Philippians chapter 4, verses 10 on to verse 13. But I rejoiced in the Lord greatly that now at the last your care of me hath flourished, flourished again, wherein ye, were, wherein ye were also careful, but ye lacked opportunity. Verse 17, not because I desire a gift, but I desire fruit that may abound to your account. Okay? So Paul wasn't rejoicing in the gift itself but in the fact that they did it from a pure heart because God loveth a cheerful giver and it's fruit that abounds to their account, okay? It's not because I desire a gift, not the thing of itself, but what was behind that, the joy that was behind it, okay? So, eh, let's continue at verse 11. Not that I speak in respect of one, for I have learned in whatsoever state I am therewith to be content. Again, there's a difference between contentment and happiness, okay? I know both how to be abased, and I know how to abound. Everywhere and in all things I am instructed, both to be full and to be hungry, both to abound and to suffer need. A trivialized verse by so many, but nonetheless, truth. I can do all things through Christ, which strengtheneth me. Why? Because Christ is in you. No, no, no depth, no height, nor any other creature will able to be able to separate you from the love that is in Christ Jesus for you who belong to him and are of his body. See, Christ within you, the hope of glory our joy and because we have the Lord within us hence to be happy you got so many out there brother sister dear friend who wants you to be happy for all the wrong reasons and yes the reasons that they are listening we as the church of the living God can be happy for amen but it begins first with God. And if you do not have joy in whom our Lord is, not just, if you just love the Lord for what he just gives you, you that's so shallow. That's not even funny. 
who the Lord is. God as God. How many of you know God as God? How many of you only know God as someone who just gives you things? Rather, to know him more completely with that perfect heart, God as God. How many of you know him as God? Or only as someone who just gives you stuff? Yes, yes, I'm not, of course, yes. He gives gifts unto men, yes, yes. But is that all you love him for? You might be saying, well, that's good enough. Well, if you are truly saved and born again of the church and living God, converted a new Christ creature in Christ Jesus, your love for him ought to be a little bit more than just what he gives, but for who he is. That's all I'm going to say about that. Matthew chapter 6, verses 1 under verse 8. Take heed that ye do not your alms before men to be seen of them. Otherwise ye have no reward of your Father which is in heaven. Therefore, when thou doest thine alms, do not sound a trumpet before thee as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the streets, that they may have glory of men. Verily I say unto you, they have their reward. Why do most of these people do what they do? To have glory of men. Because they're man worshippers idolaters. They want the prestige, the affluence. But when thou doest thine doest psalms, let not thy left hand know what thy right hand doeth, that thine alms may be in secret, and thy father which seeth in secret himself shall reward thee openly. And when thou prayest, thou shalt not be as the hypocrites are, for they love to pray standing in the synagogues and in the corners of the streets, that they may be seen of men. Verily I say unto you, they have their reward. They get to boast to you of all the stuff. Look at how religious and how pious I am. They have their reward. What? They have the praises of men. These are people who worship men. Man, man idolaters. Oh, gee. I know a couple of people like that myself, unfortunately. <laughs> But thou, when thou prayest, enter into thy closet, and when thou hast shut the door, thy door, pray to thy Father which is in secret, and thy Father which seeth in secret shall reward thee openly. But when ye pray, use not vain repetitions, repetition, vain repetition, hail Mary, full of grapes, blessed be the fruit of the blooms, the prepared prayers of Catholicism, those kinds of prayers, as pray, vain repetition, asking for the Lord, to help you with something or to provide for you every day is not a vain repetition. No, he's making uh, reference to prepared prayer, uh, prepared prayers similar to what Catholics do. Okay, that's what he's talking about. Okay, but when you pray, use not vain repetitions as the heathen do, for they think that they shall be heard for their much speaking. <laughs> be not ye therefore like unto them. For your Father knoweth what things ye have need of before ye ask him. Okay? And then Philippians chapter 3. Philippians chapter 3. Oh, wow. Really got to watch my time here. At, at three hours, the camera shuts off. And um, don't want that. Don't want that. Philippians chapter 3. Come on. Philippians chapter 3. Verses... 17 on verse 19. Brethren, be followers together of me, and mark them which walk so as ye have for us an ensample. For many walk of whom I have told you often, and now tell you even weeping, that they are enemies of the cross of Christ. But they're saying, Jesus, Jesus, yeah, what Jesus are they talking about? Whose end is destruction, Whose God is their belly, flesh. Whose God is flesh. And Satan savoreth the things that be of men and not of God, flesh. Okay? 
whose, dis, whose end is destruction, whose God is their belly, whose glory is in their shame, who mind earthly things. Luke chapter 12, verses 15 on to verse 21. And he said unto them, Take heed and beware of covetousness. For a man's life consisteth not in the abundance of the things which he possesseth. Oh, but depending on what Christian you talk to, it sure does, doesn't it? And he spake a parable unto them, saying, the ground of a certain rich man <laughs> brought forth plentiful, plentifully. And he thought within himself, saying, What shall I do? Because I have no room where to bestow my fruits. And he said, This will I do. I will pull down my barns and build greater, and there will I bestow all my fruits and my goods. And I will say to my soul, Soul, Thou hast much goods laid up for many years. Take thine ease, eat, drink, and be merry. But God said unto him, Thou fool, this night thy soul shall be required of thee. Then who shall those things be which thou hast provided? So is he that layeth up treasure for himself and is not rich toward God. John chapter 4. John chapter 4. Verses 10 on to verse 14. John chapter 4. Uh, you know, their God is their belly. Okay? Their God is their belly, whose shame, who mind, whose, sh uh, whose glory is their shame, who mind earthly things. What comes out of that belly? Oh, dirt. But John chapter 4, verses 10 on to verse 14. Jesus answered and said unto her, this is about the woman in the well, I at the well, by the way, if thou knowest the gift of God and who it is that saith to thee, give me to drink, thou wouldest have asked of him and he would have given thee living water. And the woman saith unto him, sir, thou hast nothing to draw with and the well is deep. From whence then hast thou that living water? Art thou greater than our father Jacob, which gave us the well and drank thereof himself? And his children and his cattle? Jesus answered and said unto her, Whosoever drinketh of this water shall thirst again, but whosoever drinketh of the water that I shall give him shall never thirst, but the water that I shall give him shall be in him a well of water springing up into everlasting life. John chapter 7, and we're going to close it here. John chapter 7, verses 37 and 38. In the last day, that great day of the feast, Jesus stood and cried, saying, If any man thirst, let him come unto me and drink. He that believeth on me, as the scripture hath said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. Out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. And those whose uh, glory is in their shame, who mind earthly things, their God is their belly. What's coming out of their belly? Dirt. But he that believeth on me, as the scripture has said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. My dear friend, what the world and Christianity call happy is not what God calls happy. Happy only appears 28, 29 times within the scriptures. Joy, a whole bunch more. We can be happy in what the Lord gives. Absolutely. And we have seen. We are to be so. And praise him for it. But when you lose your sight and focus on the things 
and not the one who gives you the thing himself. That's where the problem comes in. Because we can be happy in children, be happy in his provision, okay? Happy in his judgment, happy to be of service, to be witnesses unto him, happy for all that he gives. But see, at the root of all that is joy. The joy of, of our Lord is our strength. And joy comes only, true joy comes from God within you. Jesus Christ, the hope of glory. You can have all the happiness you want in this world, but have zero joy. You can have the joy of the Lord and be miserable. Why? Because happy is the man that feareth always. We are to be happy in walking in the ways of the world and not to be despondent when we see people who call themselves Christians but yet living as the world and happy, happy. <laughs> what God tells you is happy is not what Christianity tells you is happy. Beware of men. Beware of men who go about walking about as sheep, uh, wolves in sheep clothing, but inwardly they are raving wolves full of dead men's bones. Watch out, people. Watch out. You want to be truly happy. Come, let us reason together, you and I. And as uh, you of the church of the living God, brethren, your joy is the Lord that you're going to be with him. But why aren't you happy? Why? Sin? You mess up? You can have joy and no happiness. But in comparison, 28 or 29 times to the near 200 times, and that's encompassing just a few of the variations of joy. Um, happy is, tempor uh, is temporary. Joy is permanent. And when you have permanent joy, that can result in happy. That's going to be it for this video. Um, thank, thank you, brethren, for your prayers. Um, things with my wife, keep us in your prayers. <laughs> if it ain't one thing, it's the other, man. You know, she needs glasses. She, she, uh, her glasses now are going and if it's not one thing, it's another with my wife. And see, see. All these things are befalling my wife, but yet she's got the joy of the Lord in her because she knows when she dies, she's going to go home and be with the Lord, even though now she's in manifold heaviness because everything's going to hell in a hand basket, as it is said. Please keep, us, please keep my wife in your prayers. She really needs it. Pray that, you know, a pair of glasses, that my wife might be able to get a new pair of glasses. She's got glaucoma, okay? She's got what? She's got the, the, she's at her age, okay? She's got the cancerous cyst in her ovaries and her pancreas. Um, she's got glaucoma. You know, the hip thing is bothering her. Uh, six to one, half a dozen of the other. But see, there again. My wife, the joy of the Lord is her strength. So, hopefully this will help you. Hopefully, Lord willing, whoever you were who emailed me or texted me, hi, I'll get to you. Thank you so much to you all, brethren, who help us and still pray for us. Thank you so much. Uh, now, the weekend, got some stuff we're going on this weekend, but... Uh, 
Monday and Tuesday, or maybe both days, because I had to cut some out for this video in order to get this in within the three hours. Um, the next video, which we're going to be talking about joy, that's going to be big. <laughs> that's going to be big. That will probably, most definitely, be two parts. One done on one day and one done on another day. So, But anyway, that's going to be it. It's now 12.21, almost three hours. So, thank you, brethren. Thank you so much for everything. Thank you for your prayers. And we pray for so many of you. Contact one another. Speak with one another. Love one another. Praise be the Lord. We love you. We'll see you in the next video.